Well, good morning to you. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we are back from a three-day weekend. Awfully nice. Uh, got a short work week, and of course, another weekend on tap. It's Tasty Tuesday today. We've got a guest coming your way. And first off, though, I want to introduce my co-host. You see him here every Tuesday. Uh, we're talking about Benji Escobar is joining us live. And where are you today, Benji? Are you at home? I am at home in my beautiful home that I'm still decorating and, you know, building up. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, so uh, did you have a good three day weekend? I did. I did. Yeah, we, we, you know, typical weekend stuff, we relaxed, but then we had that extra day. So I relaxed even more. So that was oh, great to do. All right. Get to see the girlfriend and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, we did. And we celebrated her dad's birthday, too. So happy birthday to my, my future father in law, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. That's that news. Wow. Do we not know something yet? Have you? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. All right. Uh, Benji, thanks for being here. We want to thank everyone that's joining us on live on Facebook and YouTube. You can always catch us live just about every day when HCC is in session, with a few exceptions, uh, at 10 a.m. on Mondays through Fridays, most of the time. But they can always catch us in social media, Benji, and on HCC TV as well. Yeah, we're live on the Houston Community College District Facebook page. Uh, not at HSC, but Houston Community College District. Uh, YouTube, we're also on Twitter, LinkedIn, and on HCC TV, our own TV channel, where you can catch a rebroadcast of this show at noon, 5, and 10 p.m., Monday through Friday. Okay, so Benji, you're going to be uh, interviewing. Uh, we've got a person standing by at Coleman right now, and you'll be interviewing her in about 10 minutes, and we're going to hear about their nuclear medicine technology. But since it's Tasty Tuesday, we've got a special guest returning to the show, Chef Vanarin Cook, who is with Cafeteria Bakery and Cafe. He's our Tasty Tuesday guest. Chef Van, welcome back to the show. Awesome. Thanks, Todd. How are you? I'm doing good. Now, we are um, not only talking about your restaurant, but it's also AAPI month. And maybe you can tell us a bit about your background and your Cambodian roots. Absolutely. Um, I am first generation Cambodian American. Uh, my parents are refugees from the Cambodian. Uh, and we've, I mean, we've been in Houston for a little bit over 50 years now. Um, Cam yeah, so Cafeteria is basically our bakery. We do a lot of Cambodian inspired um pastries um and we also do once a month we do a cambodian dinner just to kind of bring the uh just the awareness of cambodian food and this our cuisine in general um kind of nestled between thailand and vietnam and so it's very unknown um what we are about and our cambodian food in general and so it's kind of been nice to be like that frontier it's men kind of push our cuisine and see where it goes now, before you started your own place, you were on some, uh, you found an audience through a couple of national TV shows. Uh, maybe you can tell us about that. Oh, sure. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, 20 years old. You you do a bunch of crazy things. And um, even when I wasn't unprepared, I knew that doing something like Top Chef, Just Desserts, the, uh, the spinoff from the, uh, the Emmy Award winning Top Chef. Um, I was on season two then and met a, a lot of really cool people. Um, one of them is my mentor now, uh, Sally, and she lives in L.A., and she's just been like a crazy guiding force in my life the last 10, 15 years and just kind of helping me figure out my career. She was the very first woman to win a Valrona um, chocolate competition, so she's a trailblazer herself, so it's a good person to have on your side. Being on those shows, I mean, obviously, do they start opening a lot of doors for you, uh, getting the recognition? Um, honestly, the recognition told me that I wasn't ready. And I think that was the big catalyst that kind of helped me move to New York City and Chicago and kind of pursue those bigger kitchens. Um, I was born and raised in Houston. And so my entire experience was based around Houston um, restaurants. I kind of got a, a taste of that working um, for Jean George in downtown when he had a restaurant here in Houston. Um, it kind of gave me kind of a taste of like the New York life and what they do. There was a silent kitchen, it was very strict, um, brigade driven kitchen. So, um, yeah, I, instead of being scared, I kind of ran towards that fear a little bit more and deep into it. I worked at a few mission star restaurants in New York, um, opened up a hotel in Chicago. So, yeah, it's one of those things where you just got to learn to trust yourself and go with it. Let me ask you this. Um, you uh, open Cafeteria and you're in Edu, which is East Side. What's your relationship out there? Yeah, so that's kind of the original Chinatown and what I like to actually refer to as Second Ward. 
Um, I just can't go down that route of those weird acronyms. Um, especially living in New York City and like I understood Dumbo, like, you know, they added an O to the end of it because no one wants under no one wants to live at the dumb down <laughs> under the Manhattan Bridge. So I get that. Uh, but the second word has been super close to my heart. Like my uncle owned a Chinese restaurant called the um, the Silver House right there on Chartres. Um, that's where every Cambodian family who ever got married, including my parents, when they were arranged marriage, they got married in that place. Um, it's still there. It's not operating. Um, but I mean, it's one of those inevitable breakdowns when the 45 North expansion is going to come. So a lot of that stuff is going to get knocked down. And so it's kind of nice to be of that re revitalization of the old Asia town kind of representing the only Asian establishment um, besides when out there. So tell us a bit about uh, uh, you're a pastry chef. Is that correct? Is that your specialty? Tell us a bit about what 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 some of the items that you you make that you're that you really like doing. Yeah, I mean, I consider myself just a cook. I started out um, in savory cooking. I did that for about seven years. Um, and just kind of transitioned into pastries when I opened up Hotel Zaza um, right there at the museum district. And so it was kind of like a moment for me to really delve into that. And then, you know, finding out that my last name, K-U-C-H, is a German surname for someone who's a pastry cook. It's one of those things I'm like, OK, I didn't really want to do pastries because that's like, for me, a glorified donut maker. Because we are like, I'm Cambodian, and so we had a bunch of donut shops as well. Um, very entrepreneurial family. Uh, yeah, so I, I I love making things that are kind of in between the savory and sweet lines. I like right. to really play around with like the saltiness and things. And, you know, salt's an electrolyte. So it's going to bring out and awaken all your taste buds on your tongue anyways. And so the idea of putting something salty on something sweet, to me, it's very natural. Tell us, uh, I'm looking through some of the items. One thing that sticks out is the hot Cheeto croissant. Maybe you can tell us about that. How'd you come up with that? Yeah, I mean, I feel like hot Cheetos and Takis is very much like a Houston thing. I don't know whether, you know, I learned through culinary school that geographically, if you're from the south side of the country, you tend to eat a lot more spicy things because it helps you sweat. Um, and obviously hot Cheetos, especially the black extra hot ones, make you sweat, sweat. Um, and then filling it with nacho cheese just reminds me of uh, like getting nachos from like a, you know, a convenience store or like a grocery store, kind of our version of a, a bodega. Especially the one next to my grandma's old washi cherry on, on West Gray. It's now like a Pink's Pizza, but kind of reminds me of that whole childhood moment of like going to this the store next to my grandma's washeteria, which by the way, that's why I named it Cafeteria. It's kind of an homage to my grandma's washeteria. She's the very first person yeah. who had a business in, in um, Houston. And washeteria is very much like a Southern word. When I was living in New York, I asked someone where the washeteria was and they're like, what are you talking about? Because <laughs> it's called a laundromat. Uh, so, you know, regional things. And so like the hot Cheeto came about because I, you know, I was moving from Chicago. I actually built a cafeteria when I was living in Chicago. And so um, I knew that I had to kind of have something that was captivating and that was going to be like um, an intention grabber. And it definitely did. Like we made a, um, a localish um, segment that kind of went all around the, like the, um, the United States and all the Channel 13s. It's what I call old school viral. Um, but that's kind of, um, yeah, it's kind of the very first thing that kind of helped launch like our career or our, our just kind of our namesake in cafeteria to kind of let people know what we're about. It wasn't going to be like this normal, you know, bakery that's going to have all these like things that people are used to, um, which are not used to in Houston. Uh, yeah, but that's kind of how I did. I've, I've always done my career. It's kind of done like super crazy flavors. Um, and now we're kind of focusing more on like Cambodian inspired things. So it's been a really cool opportunity to kind of do that. Cafeteria, you, uh, I imagine you have a full service, is it a full service menu now that you're doing, uh, do you have a PM menu as well that does with Cambodian food? So when I expanded to my commissary kitchen, because we ended up opening up a second business after a year and a half, um, like six months after COVID ended. And um, we had a super thriving wholesale business at one point. At the height of our um, wholesale business, we had about 26 coffee shops all around the city that we were catering towards. And my kitchen is very small. It's like yeah. literally under 600 square feet. So it was very intense, um, had an AM, a PM, and then an overnight team as well to kind of accommodate all of that. Um, 
So we kind of ended all that in December. <laughs> and now we're just really focusing on the morning time. Uh, my goal is I want a James Beard Award. And that's kind of where I need to focus on is the quality of everything. And um, it's shifted from just trying to, you know, be well known because we've got that now. And now I can kind of like scale back and do the things that I care about. Um, you know, and just do Cambodian dinners. We've done plated dessert nights, um, which kind of, you know, helps me get a little bit more creative and show people more of our side of cafeteria. Because, I mean, I do cook very well, but I also do desserts very well. And I've been doing um, fine dining plated desserts for about 20 years and in a few Michelin star restaurants. So, you know, it's, you know, not a big deal. Well, we're um, Chef Van. We appreciate you joining us again on the show. We're going to have all the information on Cafeteria Bakery and Cafe in our social media post after the show. Continued success. Thanks for being here again. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chef. All right, Benji. There you go. You got another place you can take your girlfriend to get something to eat now, huh? Yeah, I do. That's always exciting. Put on it's the amazing. list. <laughs> all right. So you got a special guest. You're going to take us up to Coleman. Yeah, we're moving on to Vicki Davis Littleton, a nuclear medicine technology program director for HCC Coleman College for the Health Sciences. Welcome to the show, Vicki. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So let's begin with you giving us an overview of the program and uh, how long it takes to complete. Okay. Nuclear medicine technology is a two-year program uh, and it's full-time. So our students are required to be here from 8 to 4.30 Monday through Friday. And during that time, they are also uh, in the clinics and also here in class with me. And so you can see my class right behind me. Okay. And that's not really a human, right? That's like a... Oh, no, no, no. That's that's Miss Annie. She's part of the nuclear medicine team. She's been with us probably 20-something years. And so that's our mannequin. Our, our students get to practice on that and make sure they don't squish any patients. So they, they have to squish <laughs> Annie and get, get all that taken care of before they get out of the clinics. Of course. And then, so so what degrees does your program have to offer, like certifications, anything like that? What, what do y'all do? Uh, our students will receive, after graduating, an Associate of Applied Science specializing in nuclear medicine technology. And that takes roughly five uh, semesters. If they stay with us an additional semester, they will complete the Advanced Certificate for Computer Tomography. So our students, when they graduate, have two um different paths that they can go through. So they can be stay in nuclear medicine technology, or they can also work in computer tomography. So it makes our students, you know, better marketable. And so um, they can have both of those degrees. Okay. And so tell us a little more about what a career in that field looks like for our students, like including the responsibilities, like in various jobs, like what, what does that look like? Um, our students, uh, what it's like, Nuclear medicine, what we do is we study the function of the organs. Uh, everybody's familiar with, say, radiology. They study, uh, they, they work with bones or ultrasound. You do small body parts or babies. For nuclear medicine, we focus on the organ that is malfunctioning. So a lot of people, they don't know about nuclear medicine because usually you don't see us until you have an organ that's not working, right? So we, fun uh, we look at the person uh, organ. We also are the ones who help with the diagnosis of cancer. And so um, by using radio pharmaceuticals that are injected or inhaled or um, digested, they target the, or the organ and then we can place the patient under the camera and that's how we are able to see if the organ is malfunctioning or if the person has cancer. And so what we use is basically different things that are normally um, um, taken up in the body, say, for example, a thyroid uh, scan patients, usually uh, everyone has salt and the thyroid um, organified salt. So we would use a radioactive salt. And so that's how we would see uh, the malfunction in the organ. And so we do that throughout the body. Even when we're diagnosing, say, cancer, we would use radioactive sugar, believe it or not, to, to diagnose right. cancer because okay. tumors love sugar. <laughs> so we just use natural things. Okay, so so this is something. Maybe I'm wrong here, but you could correct me. Like like chemotherapy stuff and, and things like that, or or no? No, no, no. no. We're yeah, that's more treatment, and we're diagnostic. So we're part. Um, we would be like the imaging department in the hospital or a clinic setting, like X-ray or ultrasound, uh, nuclear okay. medicine, MRI. So we're all a part of that part of uh, the diagnostic team. Okay. 
So, so, so students who are coming out of that program, where where are they expected to go work? I mean, like, do hospitals need these uh, positions to be filled in? You know, clinics. Yes, correct. Our students are working in the hospital setting and also in clinic setting, and we are sought after right now. We are, and so there's a big need for our program. And so, in nuclear medicine here in Houston, we're the only program in Houston, and we take in 25 students a year. Uh, there's one in Galveston, uh, San Antonio, and um, the uh, Dallas area. So that's it for the state of Texas. So we sought, we're not only sought after here in Houston, but all around Texas and across the country. And so during our, our students, we just had 18 graduate uh, in May. And when I tell you that the hospitals start coming in, this entire, the, the entire spring semester, they were coming in and visiting personally with the students and bringing in their whole team, including uh, the talent acquisition area to work with the students as they were graduating to make sure they get in the hospitals right away. Of course. And uh, I do understand that from our website, that with further training, uh, nuclear technologists can work with more advanced equipment than, you know. Than, yes. Than Yes, and that's part of what I said. If, if you, if our students would stay with us one more semester, they would get the computer tomography advanced uh, certificate. But also, in uh, if they stay at Coleman for an additional year, we have the Bachelor of Science in Health Management, and we also um, they can also if they go to uh, say another like a University of Texas MD Anderson, we are attached with them. They can also do like their MRI track or their teaching track. So those are some areas that um, we talk with our students right before doing the orientation process here in nuclear medicine so that they're aware of all the different opportunities once they graduate from our program. Okay. And, and can you tell us about, you know, once these students go out there on the workforce, like what, what are we looking at for like salary, like entry level? I mean, is it a good amount of you know, money that, that these yes, students it is. are making? It's, it's, it's very lucrative. Um, right now, uh, the median range starting without uh, any experience is around $43 an hour. Uh, the low end would probably be around $33. So it goes anywhere from $33 to $50 an hour. So right now, like I said, the median is around $43 an hour. And it comes out right to $90,000 a year. And so wow. without any experience in a two-year degree, I think that's pretty great. Okay. And you said you take only about 25 students a year. Maybe I should be one of those students there. That's, <laughs> yes. that's that type of salary. Yes. yes, our deadline uh, is actually for June 1st. Uh, so there's still time to apply for this year. Uh, we do take in 25 students. And the, the thing about us is that you don't have to be completed with all of your prerequisite courses before you come into our program. You can actually... Uh, apply to our program, be accepted into the program on condition that you complete your prerequisite courses by the end of the summer before you start our program. So you can apply now and you have the summer to finish up with any of the five prerequisites that are required. Okay, so tell us again, um, so is there certificates? Is this a two-year degree? You know, This is a two-year degree. Uh, your degrees will be an Associate of Applied Science specializing in nuclear medicine technology. You would also, with that additional semester that you stay with us, you will get a an advanced certificate in commuted tomography. Uh, you will sit for two registries. You will have you will be registered sort of like a, a, a registered nurse, but you will be um, you know same type, but you will be a registered nuclear medicine technologist. So you uh, can sit for two licenses, the ARRT or the NMTCB. And then, like I said, there's five prerequisite courses for our program, which is your anatomy, um, your anatomy and physiology one and two, your college chem or uh, or chemistry higher, um, your college uh, algebra or math higher, and then your physics for allied health, which is taught here at HCC uh, Coleman. And so those are the only five prerequisite courses. And our students, those those classes can be 30 years old. So it's not a requirement that they have to be within five years, like some other programs. You can you can have you know completed college 10, 20 years ago, and those class those uh, prerequisite courses are still good. Oh, wow. That's good to know. And, and and lastly, I just want to ask, I know earlier you said you have a partnership with some of the schools that are, are in the medical center. Yes, we do. Um, can this transfer over like once yes. you get out of and advance it further at a four-year university? Yes. Uh, like I said here, Coleman now 
has a bachelor's of science uh, degree in health management. So our students can, the 60 uh, credit hours that you have here in nuclear medicine will transfer over to that. Uh, if you want to go and do the MRI track or the um, teaching certificate for imaging, if you want one of those tracks, you can transfer over to University of Texas at MD Anderson. We do, and, and they do come in and talk with our students during the orientation process before the students begin. So they have plenty of time to prepare uh, for any extra courses that are required. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Vicki Davis Thank Littleton, you. she is Thank the Nuclear you. Medicine Technology Program Director for HCC Coleman College for the Health Sciences. And all of this info will be on our post after the show. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. All right. We've got some announcements to go over, Benji, before we wrap up today's show. One of them, uh, we're going to uh, congratulate our chancellor. The Texas House of Representatives recently honored HCC Chancellor Dr. Cesar Maldonado for his work leading the college system over the past nine years. Dr. Maldonado quote, fostered an inclusive, supported culture for students and staff while boosting academic achievement through innovative programs, stated a resolution introduced by Representative Mary Ann Perez. Now, the resolution also acknowledged Dr. Maldonado's leadership that increased HCC's number of graduates by more than 12% per year and other notable achievements, including leading HCC through such challenges as Hurricane Harvey and the COVID-19 pandemic. Those are just a few of the accomplishments on the resolution. For more about the honor, check out the HCC website coverage. We'll have a link in our post after the show with more information there. Um, there's also um, Friday, a Zoom session with an important subject, Benji. Yeah, it's called Brave Conversations, uh, Women's Sexual Health. HCC's Counseling and Ability Services will host women's perspectives, creating a space for brave conversations on women's sexual health. This will take place Friday, June 9th at 11 a.m., and it's going to take place on Zoom. So check out the post uh, after the show for registration. Okay, smart manufacturing summer camps. These camps go fast. If you got some kids that are looking to uh, get some education in a fun way over the summer, well, various Texas manufacturing industries will be introduced to high school students for some great opportunities over a five-day summer camp. 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., Monday to Friday, June 12th through 16th. It's at HCC's Eastside Campus. Check our post in the after the show for more information. And the West Houston Leadership Breakfast is coming up as well. Yeah, HCC Northwest will host the West Houston Leadership Institute Networking Breakfast in June. The keynote speaker will be the new District 133 representative, Mano de Alaya, uh, currently serving his first session in the House of Representatives, Texas House of Representatives. Uh, this district includes Houston's Energy Corridor, home to the global headquarters of several prominent companies. Uh, so this will take place Wednesday, June 21st from 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. at the HCC Spring Branch Campus. And for more info, definitely check out that uh, post after the show. Okay, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and HCC is reminding faculty and staff that it provides resources to help through the Employee Assistance Program, also known as EAP. Uh, it has confidential counseling services. It's also a resource for managing challenging employees' relations issues, such as workplace conflicts and substance or alcohol abuse. We'll have the link in our post after the show. You can also check your emails for helpful videos. Fall registration is open, Benji. And uh, have you registered for the fall yet? No, but I need to do that soon. Do it, yeah. Yeah, because you tell everybody each week to do it, but you don't follow your own advice, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to follow through that, yeah. Well, we've got five ways to learn, Benji. Uh, online anytime, online in a schedule, hybrid, hybrid lab, and in-person classes, which are the regular ones where you just go to a campus like old-fashioned style. If you want to sign up for many of these classes, uh, they could fill very fast. So make sure you uh, go to hccs.edu slash apply for more information. All right, for the last day of Asian American Pacific Islander Month, we'll host the Filipino Young Professionals tomorrow to discuss its wide range of events that happen all year long. And for Small Business Wednesday, we'll feature a graduate of HCC's business plan competition and 10,000 small business programs. I actually am on assignment tomorrow and then Thursday, Charday's on the air. Then I'm going on vacation for a week. So 
I won't be back till like two weeks from yesterday. Wow. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to really up your, are you going to be uh, hosting more? Yeah. I'll probably be the host yeah. for next Tuesday. So we'll see. But we'll get somebody in to help you out. <laughs> Can't leave unattended. It's yeah. Not- <laughs> Can't leave Benji unattended yet. Yeah. All right, Ben, thanks for being here. Um, and uh, think about that career change, all right? Let me know how yeah. to go. Yeah, get into the next cohort. Hey, thanks to all of you uh, joining us. Make sure you have a great week. We'll be back live again tomorrow, 10 a.m., right here for Up to the Minute.